Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. Guide us, point us in the direction of all truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Luke 5, the Lord has just healed the man of the palsy, and he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. Remember, it's through Christ we can have forgiveness of sin, and uh, he came uh, to die on the cross. He rose again the third day that we might have forgiveness of sin. Uh, so today, I guess the question I would pose, uh, where do we stand? Do we stand uh, many times uh, like the Pharisees, or do we stand as a sinner? And sometimes I think there's a lot of confusion in what that stance would be, and I think we've all at times been mixed up in that. Uh, but let's begin in Luke 5, uh, verse 26. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and they were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. So now he's called uh, Levi, uh, one of his disciples. And he left all and rose up and followed him. Again, another question. Are we following Christ today? You know, have we come to him? Have we put our trust in him and repentance and faith? Verse 29, And Levi made him a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. So here, all these sinners have come to sit and listen to Jesus. Verse 30, But the scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So now a lot of people will look and they'll say things like, um, you know, I don't want to be a Pharisee. I'm going to hang out with uh, the sinners because I'm not going to be like the Pharisee. I'm going to follow the things of the Lord. Well, let's look at that. Are we a Pharisee or are we a sinner? You know, have we ever seen ourselves? Are we justified in our own eyes? Uh, the Pharisees would have said that they were just, that they were righteous because they were doing the right things. And that's what a Pharisee would be. A Pharisee would be someone who thinks and believes that they are justified by the things that they do, that they're righteous by the things they do. Their religious acts are justifying them because they go to church, because they've been baptized, because they've uh, done these things, that they're justified. You know, when you hear someone talk about sin, do you say, judge not lest ye be judged? Now, that's one of the most misused verses in Scripture that people think as soon as you start talking about uh, sinful behavior that you're judging. Uh, the Bible talks about sinful behavior. It's, it, it talks about uh, and defines sin. It's clearly there. If we are in that case, that's what the Pharisees would have said. They would have said uh, and used, judge not lest ye be judged like a club. They thought they were okay uh, because they were keeping the law. But what Jesus said is, I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You know, when we use judge not lest ye be judged, uh, what it's talking about is not judging in a hypocritical fashion, that we're not saying one thing and doing another, and that's what the Pharisees were doing. The Pharisees, uh, they were saying they were justified by the law, but they were just as guilty of sin as anyone else. And they weren't recognizing that they weren't righteous. They needed repentance. They needed to come to the Lord. Luke 15, 10 says, Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. That when somebody comes and they recognize that they're a wretched sinner and that they need a Savior and they turn to the Lord, how do they recognize it? Uh, they recognize that they've sinned against God. They've lied. They've told many lies in their life. They've stolen. They've done wrong things. 
They've looked with lust and are considered an adulterer at heart. Whether they've actually committed the act of adultery or not, it's irrelevant because they've done it in their heart. They've hated in their heart and they're seen as a murderer before God. There are many people who have actually murdered. There are many people who have committed adultery. They can have forgiveness. They can turn in repentance and faith and turn to the Savior for forgiveness. There are so many. I saw myself as a sinner who needed a Savior. I turned to Him and I repented. And I believe on that day when I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, that the angels in heaven were rejoicing because there was joy in the presence of the angels of God because a sinner had turned to God in repentance. Acts 3.19 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. There are so many that will downgrade repentance that we need repentance. If you're a believer out there, you need repentance daily. Welcome to a life of repentance once, you, once you've put your trust in the Lord that daily you're going to come to a place where you see, you know, repentance continuing to turn to the Lord, that he continues to correct us, he continues to guide us, that it's a lifelong journey of repentance as we live in the presence of the Lord. But that first act of repentance, when we come to him, when we're born again, is what is needed in repentance and faith. Uh, those that say they've never repented, they're the Pharisees. They've never turned to him. They're sitting there and they're saying, judge not lest ye be judged, because what they're hearing is something that's convicting them of their sin. And they don't want to turn from their sin. They don't want to turn to the Lord. The Pharisees would want to kill Jesus because he pointed out their sin. They wouldn't admit to being a sinner. So the question today, if you're listening to this, are you a sinner? Because sinners need repentance. Luke 15, 2, And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. They didn't see themselves as sinners. Yes, Christ will receive sinners because he said, I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He ate with them. He didn't partake in the sin. That's where so many have these things backwards. They think that he was out there and he was partying and that he was getting drunk. You know, he wasn't. He was there telling them that they were sinners that need needed repentance. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus knew no sin. God made him to be sin for us on the cross. He took all the sin of the world and he put it on the cross so that if we will put our trust in him and turn to him in repentance, come to the foot of the cross and turn to him, ask him for forgiveness of sin, he'll give us God's righteousness that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It is the best trade ever, but if we don't come in repentance, if we don't admit, uh, admit to being a sinner, we can't. He said in Luke 5, 32, I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now Luke 15, 7 says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Those people who need no repentance, they're just in their own eyes. That's what he's saying in these passages. It, it Salvation only comes to the person, and it's an individual choice to turn to him. Are you a sinner that needs repentance? Are you a Christian that needs repentance because you've got sin in your life and you've drifted away? First John 1 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That uh, have we drifted away? Have we fallen away? You know, 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but his longsuffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's his goal. 1 Timothy 1, 15 says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came 
into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. We have to admit that we're a sinner and come to a place of repentance. Luke 24, he says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. When Jesus was here, he he told them all through the Old Testament. These are the scriptures that testify of me. And he explained all the things. When you study the Old Testament, you see everything about Jesus. And in Luke 24, 45, he says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. He explained to them, this is the gospel, that he would die for sin and rise again the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. We need repentance to be preached. It needs to be preached from the pulpit. It needs to be preached in the street. Because Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Are you a sinner? that needs repentance today, will you turn to him in repentance and faith and trust him for forgiveness of sin if you've never done that before? May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.